Hey folks, welcome back. Check this out. In this video, I'm going to lay out and clean and scrub a 10 by 12 canvas wall tent as well as set it up on the frame by myself, just a one person rig and talk you through how I built the frame and some other things that I need to do before I start doing repairs on the tent. So if that's one of the tasks that you need to accomplish after putting your tent away wet or frozen this past season, you might want to stick around because it's always better to do it yourself than it is to pay someone else. The first thing I had to do was find a bucket big enough, and this old plastic drum seemed to be about the right size. So I used a little OxyClean laundry, laundry detergent. I guess I put about four scoops in. Now I'm trying to stuff the whole tent in, but I started with the end that was the most soiled, which would have been the back, the back end, and uh, it didn't turn out that I had enough water in the barrel, but it served its purpose. Right now I'm just agitating the bottom, and it's soaking down really good, that the dirtiest side. Now I'm laying out two separate tarps so that I have enough ground cover so that my wet tent doesn't start picking up more mud and grass stains and make it even worse than it was to begin with. Second I appear, all that's rough my dear, just because I can't go So you can see that this side of the tent is still dry, but that's okay. Uh, it accomplished what I needed it to and it was soaked down the bottom side or the back side. It is heavy, so it takes a little while to get it out and get it stretched out again. And once I laid it out, I tried to section it off so I could do one panel at a time. Uh, the side and then one of the roof panels, the other roof panel, and then the other side. It takes a lot of scrubbing and a lot of elbow grease. And all I'm really doing is spot cleaning. I'm getting the really bad moldy and stained parts because it had to be put away wet uh, in the middle of the winter. Well, it got put away frozen and then when it thawed out in the spring when it was all packaged up and it started to mold again. So I'm trying to defeat that now so I can have it clean and ready for the next time I need it. Once that panel is cleaned pretty good, I did some heavy spot cleaning, but I cleaned the whole panel anyway just to remove any any loose debris and dirt and try and get out some of the other stains. Now I'm folding where the seam is at, trying to pull those door panels out because the door panels get a lot of mud on the flaps and try to scrub those really thoroughly and get the door panels as clean as I can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it to be in a decent state of maintenance. Now that that's done, I'm folding that side panel over on itself 
to expose the first of the two root panels. And I'll leave them slightly underlapped so I know how many panels are there and it makes it a little easier when I unfold it the other way. I use the stick up underneath there to flatten out the seam on the inside so it's a little bit easier to scrub because it makes everything lay nice and flat to the ground. And of course, just a lot more scrubbing. There really is a lot of elbow grease that goes into this uh, when you're a one-man show trying to do it all by yourself. Obviously, it got a little bit hot, so I went and changed into some shorts. And I think I'm starting to get blisters now on my hands. One more panel clean, one more fold. It just seems a little more organized and systematic if you do it like this, because you can focus on one section of it at a time. The hot spots on my hands were getting to be a little too much, so I decided to go find a pair of work gloves. And uh, I should have done that from the start. So if you're going to do this, I suggest putting gloves on when you begin. And the last panel is stretched out. Now that I've got it all scrubbed and laid out, uh, I kind of want that soap to soak in so I thought I'd take a little while and go get a small run in. Uh, it's about a two mile loop that I can run so that should give enough time for all of that soap and everything to soak in. The intent is when I get back to just hose this thing off and clean it out really good. And I did manage to hose it a little bit to rinse some of the soap out. But then the clouds started moving in and it got real rainy. So I just left it out there in the yard and went out in the rain every once in a while and, and rotated the panels over so they could get rinsed out real good. And that seemed to do a good enough job. Um, I didn't record it, but it you know that's that's what I did. I would suggest that you 
rinse it or throw it up on the frame and rinse it that way. So I took a little extra time to laundry the bag as well. The bag was in pretty bad shape, so I just kind of agitating it around in here. So now that I got the wall tent washed about as good as it's going to get, I need to set it up on the frame. I let it dry out on the, stretched out on the lawn for a couple of days. And I had to pull the frame out and do some repairs because my frame has wooden legs. And what it is, is I think it's a, I think it's a frame for an old awning or something. Somebody gave me all these corner brackets and the angles aren't exactly perfect for my tent, but it works. And all I did was I ripped down some two by fours and then trim off these corners with an ax. Uh, so you got a one and a half by one and a half and trim the corners rounded so they fit so you can fit a square peg in a round hole and then uh, That's all my frame is um, It's cheap. It's free uh, The tent was free. Uh, I traded a knife for it. So uh, I don't have a whole lot invested in it and I don't really want to but uh, It's lasted two winters, but last winter uh, I left it set up in the yard and didn't go check it often enough and it got such a snow load on it that one of the legs collapsed and it kind of brought the whole tent down and it broke a couple of the legs when it came down and it also one of the legs put punctured a hole in the side of the tent so now I need to set it up and make sure that everything's nice and dry and squared away and then I can get in there and I can sew that hole back up on the opposite side so the tent is ready for this next season so that's what I'm doing So if you see the colors on all the pieces, what I did was I assembled the frame and cut the pieces all individually to the proper length. And because the corner brackets aren't the exact right ones for my tent, each piece, each section had to be a little bit different. So the blue is for the beams, like the main beam and the side beams. And the red is for the rafters. And then I was going to use white on the walls, but I didn't have a white, so I just used gray. So those are the three colors in the pattern. So it makes it real easy to just throw all the parts out on the ground, lay them out where they go. You know, all six of the wall, wall beams are the same length. All six of the rafters are the same length. And all six of the, um, of the beams are the same length. So anytime one breaks, I can just grab one of the other ones and make a replacement part that's exactly the same size. Now I do a cross hatch with the ropes over the rafters to just kind of hold the main piece together while I drape the tent over so it doesn't fall apart underneath me. But it serves as double purpose because those, it'll have two ropes running along the inside of the, of the roof that I can hang lanterns or a jacket or anything that I need to just hang in the middle of the, of the tent is easy enough to accomplish. I also sometimes run the same system along each side in order to have a place to hang my pots and pans and rifle and gear bags and stuff like that if I take the tent out hunting. It's pretty easy to set one of these tents up even if you have a, a more traditional frame design with only one person. You just set up the roof or the truss area, drape the tent over and then build one wall and then build the other wall. It's not a real complicated task for one person. Now what I didn't do is I didn't guy it out because I intend to take it back down. It's just up there to, to finish drying so that I can do some repairs on it. And eventually I want to build a canvas rain fly for it that also extends out to be a kitchen porch so I can put some of my kitchen cooking equipment on the outside of the tent. So this is where the tent frame broke and poked through the sidewall. So next I'll have to patch and repair this, but we'll save that for another video. So overall it looks pretty good inside. It's a lot cleaner than it was, uh, believe it or not. I'll probably never get it white again without bleaching it which I don't want to do but now that it's up on the frame uh, I can do the repairs on it that I need to and then I can re-waterproof it. Well as usual I hope you got something useful out of that and if you did 
consider subscribing to the channel and uh, I'll put any pertinent links down in the notes uh, if I can think of anything that you might be interested in to go along with this and join me on the next one I'll build a fly I'll do the repairs on it and uh, set up the inside so you can see what it's supposed to look like when I actually take it out and use it for hunting purposes so thanks for sticking around and I'll see you on the next one